What's good? It's Josh Levi and you're watching The Hip Hop Guru. My name is Alex. This is The Hip Hop Guru. Today we have a very special guest in the building. Houston Zone, LA Zone, hey. Josh Levi. Yes, How you doing, sir. man? You good? Happy to be here, G. Welcome to Toronto, very man. Excited. You said you were out here in uh, 2018 before, you know, you're back out here this time. Yes. This time it was like a bit of a snowstorm that you had to fight through. A bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's cool. I, I haven't been here in a minute. I love Toronto. I've been saying that all day. I just, I don't know why I really love this city and I love the energy here. I love the people. I love like the creativity. Mm -hmm. um, I could see myself living here definitely like in another life. Mm -hmm. it's, it's great energy here. It's kind of like the New York, but a little bit more relaxed, you know? Yeah, yeah. it's chill. I'm a chill person. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still, like, really creative, and, like, I think people here, I've gotten a sense that people here go after the things that they want. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that accurate? No, for sure. Yeah. Definitely a lot of people trying to compete with each other, but it's like every city, you know? So it's yeah. like, yeah. But definitely a lot of people wanting like a lot of goals and like aspiration and motivation and a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. I like that. So for you, you grew up in uh, Houston. You know, how was that like on your musical upbringing? Houston, Houston has a lot of talented people. Damn, it's like just great musicians, great singers, great arts programs, great just entertainment and, and music. So I think I was always around like really talented people, which is a blessing. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up singing in church. So that's my story. I was, what's up? I saw one of your videos too, which is a really cool series. You said that for the first eight years, you were only listening to gospel. Yes. Yeah. You know your stuff. Mm -hmm. Do we research it? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah, man, for the first like eight to nine years, that's like all that I heard, which is so crazy because there's so much music and I was only in one part of it. Mm -hmm. um, but now looking back, I think I, I can appreciate it and like I'm grateful for that. My parents didn't not, it's not that they didn't not like other types of music. They just, that's just all they really listened to. So. Mm -hmm. um, I was behind on what was happening in the world and like in in pop culture. Like it was never like the MTV awards weren't on. It, I didn't know any like crazy moments going on. All I knew was BET and BET Gospel. So um, that was that was my upbringing. I performed at every local charity showcase, talent show, choir, church whatever you can call it, I either was signed up or I performed. So that's a different thing too, cause like, you know, that's a lot of motivation at a young age cause you're out there trying to prove yourself and your, you know, your, your ability to show that you want to be somewhere at such a young age. What was going through your, your, like your mind at that time where you're like, I want to be in this place, I want to be in this place so I can prove myself? Uh, I always say, so I've been homeschooled and like, most of my life, which is weird, but it worked, I guess. Um, but I went to a private school for elementary. So first to fifth grade was like my only time in like a regular school experience. It was still private though. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like the only black kid. Um, the only other one was my sister <laughs> in Alvin, Texas. And I would sing all the time just in class and stuff as a kid. and. One time, the principal pulled me out of class and brought me to like the office, and I was really confused. And it was like all the all the women there, like different teachers and stuff. And she was like, "Can you just sing that one song? Like, can you sing something?" And I sang like some gospel song, and all of these grown-ups became emotional. They were in disbelief. A, a yeah. shift in energy. Mm -hmm. I remember as a young kid, I was like, that's, what is that? Like, what, what is, what ability do I have? Like, what, what is this gift? And so I think I, as soon as I realized that, 
I was like, I wanna, I like that feeling. And I, I, that's cool that I'm able to make people feel something. Um, how can I continue to do that and like more and more and more on bigger scales? Mm -hmm. That's kind of what drove me. So do you find that was the moment that you got like true confidence in yourself and that like you have like to this day? I think so. I guess so, yeah. I don't know how I was confident. I really don't know. I mean, I guess, I guess my, my mom really believed in me and that helped a lot. Um, but I think, that, I think that's probably one of the main things, yeah. It's it was a big proof thing. in front of my eyes. I was like, what is, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I like this. That's a big thing because that's not like, not many people can have that story, you know? Because that's like, you know, one in a million kind of thing. Yeah. And you've also lived like the life of, the life of like many people's dreams, like all into one, which is pretty crazy as well. So, um, so that's a big thing. So for you, you've also taken a, a jab into acting as well. So that, because it's one thing to sing, it's another thing to act. And it's like, how, what was your idea when you got into acting and then being on a crazy show like Friday Night Lights? So as a kid, I wanted to be an artist always. I wanted to be like a rock star always. Mm -hmm. But when you're a kid, not many people are trying to hear that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like you can have some opportunities, but they're like, oh, that's cute. Um, but in the acting world, it's like you you can be anything you want to be. And yeah. they love it, and it's very welcomed, and it's very inviting, mm -hmm. and just young young talent. Yeah. So that's really what happened. I found myself like just getting more opportunities in acting um, than singing, even though I was still doing everything that I could. Yeah. And I was auditioning for a lot and just going for a lot of different things. And um, yeah, I ended up on Friday Night Lights for two seasons. I did a lot of theater and stuff when I was younger. A lot of theater, a lot of musicals, a lot of like <laughs> a lot of musical theater. Um, you find that that helps with like choreography and like being able to be a true MC on the stage kind of thing? I think so. Yeah. I think it was just the fact that like I was in front of every type of audience. Mm -hmm. I would do the gospel stuff, I would do the church stuff, I would do just like the local stuff and sing covers. Then I would also sing in front of like a crowd of like of people who went, came to musicals and play plays, which was a different type of crowd. but. All of it to me was like performing. Yeah. So, um, or putting on a show or like telling a story. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it definitely played a part into probably the dramatics of what I like to do now. <laughs> yeah. So now when like you fast forward a little bit, do you feel like there's any limitations to what you can share in your music or is it just the life is like an open book kind of thing? Uh, it's pretty much pretty much an open book. I mean, I always say I share what I want people to know. Mm -hmm. And when they don't know, I, they don't know. <laughs> Nobody has to know everything, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I definitely, I definitely like privacy and I like having a mystery and just like showcasing what I want to showcase and then, and then everything else is what it is. But for the most part, I'm a pretty honest person. Mm -hmm. um, to a, to a, to a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? To a degree kind of thing? Or? Yeah, but when it's negative, like to a fault. Okay, okay. I, I think, because if I feel something strongly, I've, I've been talking to my therapist about this. Mm -hmm. If I feel something strongly, it's really hard for me to hide it and not express it. But that's a good thing, because if you body up a lot of the emotion, then that you'll come crashing down exactly. really badly, right? So, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I think that that can be very dangerous. So. It is, yeah. yeah. Um, but also, it's not always the easiest to express certain things. Or sometimes things affect me in a way that is hard. Mm -hmm. um, so, or not the most popular. So, all well, I have to say, I'm pretty honest. So, I'm, I, I like to just, like, if I'm experiencing something and going through something, I talk about it, I write about it. Every song I've ever put out is a true story. It's something that I experienced. It's something that happened to me, or something that I did. And uh, I strive to be, like, a very just authentic person. No, for sure. So, that, 
with, with disc one, your idea was kind of like proving yourself in a certain way. Yep. And then disc two, tell me about like the idea of each project. And I like how you named it disc one and disc two because you were saying how you don't like to categorize genres because popular or pop music is just like popular, right? Right, right, right. So like what was your vision with disc one and then going into disc two? So what's cool about both of those projects is one is independent and one's with a label. Mm -hmm. So looking back, it's really dope to see both music connected, both bodies of work connected with a lot of people, mm -hmm. um, but in different ways. Mm -hmm. So disc one was just the first time that I felt like I was able to accomplish articulating my point of view sonically. Um, there's so much of my life people tried to put me in a box of like, you should be R&B only, mm -hmm. or you should be pop only, or you should just be alternative only, or you should do like more hip hop type vibes. But I always was kind of a combination of everything and inspired and connected with all those things. So I feel that disc one was my first time that I was able to kind of put everything together in a way that made sense to other people. And then disc two in my eyes was like a more, just like an elevation of that and a mature uh, second, second 2.0 of, of that, um, but with a label. Yeah. So those are, those are kind of those, what those two projects mean to me. I think it's cool that you have the acting background as well because you can see it in the music videos how there's a story, but it's not just like a story that's like, you know, a regular video. These are like really well put together videos where you're actually putting music out there, but it's also, you know, the story side of what you're saying on the track and the visual together. Thank you, man. So well, what's your idea with the visual connection with the um, creative direction with the videos? Uh, I'm a huge music video guy, which is so funny because <laughs> I didn't even watch them growing up. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's me, like, just now feeling like I'm able to get that out yeah or I, I don't really know because I think that's what it is I'm playing catch-up I'm inspired by so many things and in this brain up here I see so many things mm -hmm. so I'm a very visual person I even see songs as colors and, and as I'm creating music I know that I will like a song that I'm making if I can see a music video it's two things if I can see the music video and if I can see me performing it live that's mm -hmm. how I know that I really like something that I'm making. Um, so for the visual side of things and the approach I like to take, I'm, it's so exciting for me. It's one of my, well, it used to be my favorite part. Now, music videos are stressful. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's, it's just like the business side of it and like I have crazy ideas and they're expensive ideas. Yeah, just like, listen, tone it down a little bit. Right. Like, yeah. So, that part has, has become, it's so many moving elements. It's like, mm -hmm. it's a lot of, a lot of moving pieces for putting together a visual. So it's become more stressful, but I still love it. Um, yeah, it's like, it's definitely one of my favorite parts of this, bringing the song to life um, and taking it off of just like the page. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what's your creative process when you're, cause you were saying there's many different parts of like, thinking of the song as a video, as a performance, mm -hmm. what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you make the song? Is it the one or the other? Um, it's really both at the same time. Yeah. I have to see myself performing it. If I don't, then I hate the song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I literally, I just, I completely disconnect with it. And that's happened, that like still happens all the time where people will like love something that I make mm -hmm. and then other people will like it, and then I just I just can't see myself. I'm not excited to perform it, so the enthusiasm for the record will just deplete. No, for sure. But um, and then on the music video side, the music video doesn't always come first. But as long yeah. as I have like some some inspiration or something that I see, or just like a color or at least a vibe, um, then I'm good. Yeah. The whole story may not come with, come to me, but um, like Vices, I remember, I, like visually, it wasn't immediate. 
um, uh, like a, a, a vision. Mm -hmm. But then over time, it like really came together for me, and I really loved it. And I actually directed. I was like myself, my first, my debut of like self-directing my music videos. Congratulations! But honestly, I've directed, co-directed most of the things I put out. Mm -hmm. I just don't really take credit for it because it's not important to me. Yeah. But that was the moment where I was like, it's just me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. So that's that's really cool too because you're able to like have every control over every single part you know so it's like it's cool but it's also hectic at the same time right eh. yeah mm. yeah it is I'm a control freak but not in a negative way like I just I I have a vision and I'm very detailed and I find that sometimes people aren't as detailed as I am um, and that's what I think brings out like the Creative side, hands-on side. Yeah. Of but you have to be like that because you're giving yourself to the world on with the music, it's right? My life. Yeah. That's I think what a lot of people forget. Like, even though I have an amazing team and people that I'm partnered with to mm -hmm. bring this vision to life, it's when I put something out, people are not judging my label. They're not judging my team. They're not judging my manager. They're not judging my anything is the person they're judging is Josh mm -hmm. so um, that's something that I, I think is always in my mind like whatever happens whatever I put out I have to full fully 1000% stand by it because it's people that are it's like representing me yeah it's um, quality over quantity at the end of the day right yeah. and whatever you put your stamp on is what you like you're saying you love which you put out, you know, it's like a chapter. So if you want, you're not gonna put out like a chapter that you don't care about because then, you know, you just rip the book out of the page, or the page out of the book kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, you had one feature on disc two. Yeah. And that was with your childhood friend, and that was on the remix. Mm -hmm. So um, talk about like not going with any features at all and then Normani being the one that you go with for that one song. Um, Kind of just like we talked about, I'm, I'm really selective. Mm -hmm. And collaborations like are such a big deal to me. Maybe they're not like as big of a deal to the people on the outside or like just to people now, but I really value them. I think that it has the potential to be like just a really dope moment. Mm -hmm. um, and as I've done my research and like caught up on such really like such crazy and cool moments in pop culture and music and collaborations. It has so much significance that I think that's important to me. And I'm not as passionate about just having someone on a song just to have them on a song. Mm -hmm. I really want to uh, just be connected with that person. Yeah. And for it to elevate the song. No, for sure. Because you can always tell when people are recording songs when one is like emailed over and it's a feature on the song yeah, or if yeah. you've actually been in the studio right you know like recording and the the energy and the flow and the the cadence and For everything sure. is like you know you can tell For yeah sure. yeah I, I think that's what makes it fun and that's what i that's what music is supposed to be mm -hmm. like we're all we're all artists yeah so the whole idea is to bring two different processes together and what happens when that happens yeah what comes out of that. Um, so, yeah, for this too, and just even all my future collaborations, there's so many people I'd love to collaborate with. Actually, a lot of Canadians. Yeah? I think Canadians just know what they're doing. Who are some of the Canadian artists that you want to have, like, on a potential, potential next one? Um, Aubrey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, the boy. Uh, I love Drake, bro. Um, it's a Canadian legend, man. He did so much for this country that would have we would have never been in a position musically, culturally, without Drake's you know ability to put things together. So yeah. he changed everything for Canada. Yeah, he just gets it. He's a he's a he's a leader. He's a boss. He's an icon. Um, I have the most respect for him. Um, Abel, mm -hmm. Spye. Yeah, man, the weekend. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying their names like that, but those are the homies. You know, adapt them up when you see them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
uh, the weekend, man, he's just, he's just so, he's the future. He's just the head of, of the game and he's so himself. And I'm just so, I've always been inspired by him. Mm -hmm. um, Bieber. Yes, sir. That's my boy. Biggest fan of him. Um, Party Next Door. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the list goes on. There's just really dope ass people from Canada. Like, yeah. It's crazy too, because all those artists have done so many different things, like Drake and The Weeknd, even on Take mm -hmm. Care, they have like Crew Love, yeah. which is insane. And like, I've always wished they'd do like a collaboration album, which yeah. would uh, would honestly go crazy. Yeah. And then like, even like Justin Bieber, you know, like what he's done since such a young age, it's right. just like, you know, kind of like your story too, because you've lived so many right. lives that people would like, you know? Yeah. So yeah. like, um, that would be crazy. So that's like a bunch of like different really, uh, features on one album, which would go crazy for the Canadian side. Yeah, I would be down with just that list. It's cool. I mean, I have obviously so many people I love to collaborate with, but um, since I'm sitting here in this city, in this country. It's only right. Yeah. They're, they're the top for today. Respect to that. So um, I wanted to ask you, like, you, you were on the show called X Factor, you know? And was that? Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you made it really far. But when you, I was watching all those videos and you were performing, it was like you've been there for like 30 years, you know? So like you had like no fear and there's like a crowd of like thousands of people. Like, what was like, how were you able to be so confident at like such a young age? Man, it's a blessing. I don't really even know. I, I was, I don't know how I had that much confidence. Like, sometimes I look back at that kid and he seems more confident than who I see in the mirror. Hmm. Um, but I don't know, I, I, I think my mom has really believed in me and that that kind of informs just like how I saw myself. And then I think I, I think I did just over time notice like the gift that I had with or without people's approval. I, I do remember that day thinking in my head like this is a huge opportunity, but also I'm still gonna be me. No matter what. No matter what. Yeah. Like this won't decide if I'm meant to be here. Because at the end of the day, it's literally just you versus you. Anybody else's opinion means nothing, you know? Right, yeah. right. So I think I, I kind of just grasped that, con that concept and I knew that God gave me a gift. And for some reason, yeah, I walked out on that stage that day, um, the day that I auditioned and I was comfortable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is so, it's so crazy. I still feel that today yeah. in a lot of different spaces and a lot of different stages in a lot of different places, but those three things rhymed. But um, but yeah, it's like, it goes back and forth. I also can be just as insecure as everyone else at yeah. certain moments. That's an important thing too, because a lot of people see like people who have like fame and they think that they're like on a different level, but everybody's just human at the end of the day. For sure, bro. Like, it might seem like people are superheroes, but no. I definitely had a therapy appointment right before my, the day before my flight, so yesterday morning. Um, I still go through comparing myself and not feeling good enough and all the regular shit that everyone feels all the time, honestly. Like, it goes in waves. My goal is to, like, get to a place where I'm just consistent and my faith and confidence in myself and mm -hmm. my and, and my purpose. But yeah. I'll definitely, you know, go back and forth where of moments of being completely fearless where it's like, who's that person? And then and then the opposite of of questioning everything and being like, is this even is this gonna is this gonna work? <laughs> You know, that's yeah. interesting because you, you've accomplished so much success in different like avenues, but you're still, because the, the important thing is that there's no ceiling to success, right? right. If you cap something off, then you're kind of just closing off what you can do. But you're saying you don't feel like you've reached that level. 
Wait, what do you what do you think like is the next like goal of yours to kind of accomplish? I am a dreamer. I am like I I really believe in the impossible, um, which I know is dangerous for some people to hear. People like to take that and use it against you, but I I believe in like. I really just want to do things I've never done before and like continue to be a testimony and change my life, change my family's life. Yes, I have the same goals, the normal goals of like number one song and like uh, like Grammys and things like that. And now Grammy nominated is in front of my name, which is crazy. Congratulations as well, that's a big thing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm, I, every day I like take that in. I want to see myself the same with or without that, but it's still like crazy. Um, but yeah, I have those. I have those goals. Like every every artist right has. Um, but I, I try not to focus on that too much because I think I've had eras in my life where I, I allowed those things to like work negatively against me or be too powerful in my mm -hmm. brain, in my spirit, in my space, or in my even creative process. Now I focus on just making things that feel really good to me, that will move people, and it's quality and being excellent. And kind of just letting the, the cards fall where they may, what's the saying? With the kind of like having the I'm not sure actually, like cards kind of fall like in place kind of thing, the yeah. puzzle the puzzle piece kind of thing. Yeah, I'm probably saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Letting it fall where yeah. it needs to go. Just if I show up and if I'm my best self, then I'll accomplish every dream. That's what I believe. Mm -hmm. That I'll accomplish every dream that I have if I just show up and I'll be my best and, and be a good person. Mm -hmm. But yes, I do want a number one song. Yeah, <laughs> no, it'll come, man. So like, how, what was that feeling like with the, um, with the Pixar song, and because you got you did a whole thing with like with the group over there. Well, how was it working like with when you what the feeling when you had like that charting song with with uh, Billie Eilish and Phineas? It was kind of just the gift that kept on giving. Um, I I really didn't know what what was gonna come of just that. The that whole. film and that opportunity. Yeah. Um, I didn't even audition for it. I didn't. I didn't know about it. Um, I got an email from like my team, and they were like, "You, this is the movie. You've been asked to be a part of it." Um, and Billy and Phineas wrote all the music, and they just had me in mind as one of the members of the group. Mm -hmm. And so it was like a blessing that was just, I didn't like really chase after or go after. And I was just grateful to be a part of it. And I lended my voice. I always, it was full circle because I'm, I'm like a big kid in some ways. Like I love animations. I love cartoon. I love The Incredibles. I love Pixar. My favorite movie is Prince of Egypt. It's an animated film. Like, so it was really, it was a full circle thing that I hadn't done yet. Mm -hmm. I love doing things I haven't done yet. Yeah. And um, I left it at that. Mm -hmm. I like, after the multiple days of recording and doing all that, I was just like, I kind of closed the door and I was like, cool. You know, back to writing my music and just being the artist that I am. And then it just, it continued to grow and really connect with people and like become this, this phenomenon um, and I was, I just watched it all happen. Mm -hmm. So like, what was, what was that feeling when the song hit like over a hundred million plays? A hundred million. Um, it's cool and it's like, it's just cool that I'm a part of it, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, I, I, I'm glad to be a part of it. It seems like something I'm not a part of, and then every day I'm reminding myself, like, Josh, you're in the movie. You're yeah. A character, you contributed to this film. Mm -hmm. um, so, it's really cool, and it's like inspiring. It's very inspiring because that's what I aim for, you know, with my music. So, 
I'm seeing what it looks like when some when like something kind of goes bananas and like, yeah. it spreads around the world. Um, mm-hmm. That's cool to be a part of. That's cool, man, because that's also like a childhood dream, like you're saying, kind of, and then like you lived that part. So if you were to go back and like give yourself some advice that you know now, what would it be? Oh my gosh. So much, man. <laughs> it's a tough question, so that's... Damn, I would tell myself so much. To my younger self or my younger self telling to me? Either or, to be honest. Um... So many things I would say. I think, I think I, if I, I would tell my younger self, it would be two different things. I would tell my younger self, it's gonna work out, keep going. Mm-hmm. Like, good things will happen. Yeah. Um, I experienced a lot of just challenges and adversity and chaos in my personal family when I moved to LA, or like kind of after X Factor. During X Factor is kind of where it started, but, um, and it just seems like bad thing after bad thing after bad thing. Um, and it's still kind of that case, it's still in, in a lot of ways that way now. Um, but I, I would love for my younger self to know like, people that you respect are gonna respect you. Mm-hmm. That would have been really encouraging yeah and just exciting um and i like to think that that's going to continue happening i hope that if you knew that you would have this song with this person or collaborate or i don't know like i like to think of things like that yeah um and then my younger self telling my older self Try, like, keep, keep being fearless, keep having faith, and, and not take away the power from other people. Yeah. Because that kid that you said, like, about walked on that stage, mm-hmm. that's crazy. Like, who is he? How did he do that? Like, yeah. I, I would love to have that energy still. Well, you're the same person, man. So, you know, that that person that was, like you are saying, that had that crazy energy is still that person that you are today with more experience and more, more, you know, more wisdom and all that, so. More experiences, yeah. True, yeah. So, yeah, I would just, my younger self tell my older self, hey, we're still the same person. Mm -hmm. You can still, whatever we accomplish, like, to get out of this, you can still use that same, uh, that same strength to whatever is coming at you to do. To make what you've done even larger in the future, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, man, I do appreciate your time so much. I could literally talk for hours and hours, but I know you have- This is like the most calming conversation and most chill, just like, I was like, are we even filming? Yeah. (laughs) No, I was literally like, you know, I wasn't even looking at the nose kind of thing, you know? I was just like going off like really, it's like, it's tough when it, like, you know you're supposed to talk about certain things, but this yeah. was an honest conversation, and you know, the only reason we're stopping it because we have the time thing on it. But yeah. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to do this again sometime, man. Sure, but yo, man. I really appreciate you. My God. And what you've done in your life, man, that's super motivational, and you know, you are like, you know, the motivation for so many people, so, you know, that's great. I'm gonna watch that video again and be like, yo, I interviewed this guy, that's nuts. Damn. That yeah, means man. a lot, man. You, I, you helped me see some things I forgot about, so I really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Well, man, if I could be, be any part of that, then, you know, then that's a good thing in my position. So thank you for that as well. Good shit, man. You know, man. Brother. Thank you so much. Till next time, man. Yes, sir. All right. Can we...